Welcome back. This is still Breakfast Daily right here on City TV. Don't forget, you can interact with us. Use the WhatsApp number 0550-585-832. And of course, if you're texting us from outside of Ghana, use the country code plus 233. You can also use the hashtag Breakfast Daily across all social media platforms, and we will hear from you. <laughs> yep. And, uh, you know, this is Ghana is a very, very important yeah. uh, event that is happening and it's very dear to our hearts. One of the most important yeah, events Yeah, it's absolutely happening. dear to our hearts. And um, we, we, as you can see on your screen there, um, we are preparing very, very actively and aggressively for the event itself. But one of the... Um, peoples that are going to be joining us on the uh, This is Ghana Fair and Exhibition have come up on the set with us and uh, we're going to have a conversation with the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. All right, they're doing all kinds of wonderful things over out there, um, you know, and um, we've been joined by the Director for Commercialization and Communication at the Commission, and Anab Wating, as well as the Deputy Director for Radiation Protection um, Institute, and that's uh, Professor Stephen Inko. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Good morning, both gentlemen. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you, and Thank good, good morning. morning. All right. Good morning. Thank you. So you know, a lot of the time in Ghana, we say atomic, especially those who live in atomic, <laughs> atomic, atomic. They just think it's some, um, you know, <laughs> transportation destination. But, <laughs> no, but it's true. Yeah, I know, People right? don't understand that. Where you drop there's atomic? This, uh, atomic. <laughs> <laughs> they don't understand that there's this yeah. entire entity with wonderful people like you who are doing great work that unfortunately, yeah. as Ghanaians, yeah. we are not highlighting. Yeah. And you know when you talk about poster children mm. you know you're growing up oh he was a poster <laughs> child he was a poster the atomic yeah. energy commission is one of the poster children yeah. when it comes to what we're trying to do mm. with this is ghana you know talking about innovation talking about not just the things we get from abroad but the mm. things that we're doing here mm. and that's why these two gentlemen are here so yeah. um, i want to start by asking you what is the mandate of the Atomic Energy Commission, you know, and, and let people understand that it's not just I'm um, dropping at atomic. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, yeah, building yeah. or building reactors. Or building reactors. Yeah, great. Um, so good morning to you good once morning. again, and uh, good morning to um, all your viewers. Um, for this question, it's a very important question, and we keep get, getting this question all the time. And uh, we are happy that CTTV has given us the opportunity to highlight what we do as a commission. And so um, the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission was an institution that was set up by our first president, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, um, with an act of parliament, um, uh, 204, 1963. Okay. Yeah, but um, later it was upgraded, or let's say revised, in the year 2000 at um, 588. And uh, this new or revised act allows um, the commission, the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission now, to kind of commercialize its research findings and also its technologies. So what do we do? Uh, we do a lot of things um, from research work. We do a lot of research work uh, into nuclear science and nuclear technology, radiation. Mm -hmm. And aside that too, we also um, advise government on nuclear issues. You know, when we talk about nuclear, it has all <laughs> international connotations. So mm -hmm. we also set, act as um, um, diplomacy to the government um, giving government guidelines on what to do when it comes to nuclear activity here in our country. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure very soon you might have heard about Ghana trying to move into nuclear power and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, the good thing is that because we started long ago, we have um, the knowledge, the technology, mm -hmm. the, um, the men, let me put it that way, <laughs> and the women <laughs> and, uh, who can man um, such facility here uh, in this country mm -hmm. without worrying about bringing expatriates and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I think Ghanaians should be proud to have such an institution in this country. Aside that, we, move, we are also into different other um, technologies and research. We are also into radiation protection, and uh, mm -hmm. Professor Inkum will explain <laughs> what radiation protection is in there. And so um, anytime you drive past Hachu and then Mm. You are going to Kabinya and say you are light at, at atomic. atomic. <laughs> Remember that the institution that is there is responsible for research and um, development of technologies, also into nuclear power, and also training of people who mm. handle some of these technologies. Mm. And mm. then we have a lot of technologies now that we are prepared to now engage the private sector 
in commercializing. Okay. And trust me, uh, these technologies, I can tell you, I'm for free that this is um, first to market. Mm. And so when you wow. get in touch with us and then we are going to partnership, you could probably be the sole uh, proprietor mm. of such a technology wow. in partnership with Gaia. Thank uh, you yes. for this business idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we get into the first to market technologies, uh, let's find out what is radiation protection? Thank you very much. As my colleague just indicated, uh, we were established to give all the advice to government and also on the peace, it's on the peaceful utilization of nuclear science and okay. applications. Radiation Protection Institute is one of the technical institutes of the commission. Apart from this, there are other five, if I may go through briefly. Yes, of yes. course. Yes. So the Radiation Protection Institute is one of the technical institutes. We have the nu National Nuclear Research Institute. We have Biotechnology and Nuclear Agricultural Research Institute. We have Ghana Space Science and Technology Institute. We have Radiological and Medical Science Research Institute. And we also have a graduate school of nuclear and other sciences where we train uh, the human, the available human resource personnel for preservation of nuclear knowledge. Wow. Because as you know, uh, since 1964, the commission has been established mm. and people will retire, people will leave the commission. So there is the need for the young ones to take up. Uh, so since 2006, uh, together with the International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, they are one of our key international partners. Okay. It's based in Vienna, Austria, and in collaboration with the University of Ghana, we have established this school. So when we offer all these uh, nuclear research and also the technical services. Mm. Okay. But when you talk about radiation protection, we are exposed to radiation wherever we are. Even <laughs> wherever we are, from the food we eat, okay. uh, we are exposed to radiation through potassium-40. Mm -hmm. We are exposed to radiation when we walk on the sun, mm. Uh, mm. cosmic rays from the mm. uh, uh, sun. Yeah. And then also, there is also radiation that emanates from the Earth crust. Mm. Uh, so we are exposed to radiation. These are called natural background radiation. Okay. But apart from that, we also have the man-made. The man-made are the ones that you and I, we utilize it for <coughs> our benefit. So for instance, <laughs> for instance, I believe <laughs> all of us here and yes. most of our viewers have taken an X-ray yeah. from a hospital before. Yeah. Uh, of, uh, and if you take an X-ray, that is a source of man-made radiation. Mm. And there is the need to put in place some control mechanisms so okay. that the staff that utilize the equipment and we patients that go there for those services are safe. Mm. So uh, that is one aspect of radiation protection. We call it medical exposure. Okay. And there is also radiation protection in the environment. Mm and radiation protection of personnel. Mm -hmm. So the institute was set up to offer the relevant technical services in health research, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation, mm. Mm. to make sure that all of us are safe with respect to the okay. safety. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, so you go to the hospital, the doctor tells you you need an x-ray mm -hmm. because you're complaining about pain in your leg or your arm or your neck or your back, but you don't know that there's a whole group of people who have made sure that you are safe mm, exactly. when you Whilst do that. Whilst doing the... Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 exactly. And this yeah. is one of and the... And these people are Ghanaians <laughs> like us. Yes, yes. <laughs> and this is one of the technical <laughs> services that yeah, the Ghana Atomic Energy Commission ranges okay. uh, in, 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 in support of the Nuclear Regulatory Authority because they are the regulators when yeah. it comes to okay. the use of yeah. an azure addition. But yeah. we provide the necessary technical support mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, the, the, as you, the instance you give mm -hmm. Is the, the procedure is safe from the way of the patient and also the staff. Yeah. Let, let me come to you, Nana. Um, as far as the This is Ghana Exhibition Affairs concerned, mm -hmm. why is it important for you as an institution, as a commission, uh, to be on such a platform, one? And then also talk to us a bit about maybe a few of the first market you know, um, um, technologies mm. that you think will be exciting for Ghanaians mm. to know that you are, in, you're, you're, you're about. Mm. Yes, uh, so we believe that um, um, this event is a, is a very important um, platform to engage the Ghanaian population. Um, um, you all will agree with me <laughs> that uh, <laughs> I have very, very uh, minimum knowledge about what we do and then um, Looking at the audience that um, City TV, City FM do have, we believe that coming on board this program will afford us the opportunity to engage further. Mm. And also, we have our doors open for 
um, the Ghanaian public to engage us in partnership, like I mentioned earlier on, mm. in several other things. And so we want to expose um, our technologies to the, to the public so that they have the opportunity to ask us questions and find out how we, they can come into partnership with us. And so speaking about some of the technologies that we have, I would like to mention a few that are quite yeah. enormous. Um, so currently, um, he did mention one of um, the institutes that are responsible for biotechnology okay. uh, research findings. Uh, currently, they have um, a technology that allows us to multiply seedlings at a very faster rate, what we call the tissue culture okay. and the mutation breeding. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you have plantain suckers um, for plantain farmers, mm -hmm. you do not have to wait till you have a plantain and then plug the suckers <laughs> from the side. <laughs> Through technology, we can have so many, multiply the suckers, really? so many, yes, yes, yes. It's done in a lab and then we can, wow. you can have so many of these that you can as quickly as possible. Mm. Um, for flower um, growers, um, those into rows and other ornamental plants, mm. um, once you come into contact with that, we can multiply your, 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 your type of flowers that you want. Mm. So many of, um, seedlings for you so that you can multiply your, your plants and your, your farm, you know. Wow. So this is just one, <laughs> one of it. <laughs> no, you have no, piqued my interest <laughs> because I'm just thinking about yeah. it. This, yeah. is, this is like endless possibilities, really. Yes. You know, yes. because, yes. I yes. mean, you have so many people who uh quietly in their corner trying mm -hmm. to do you know yes. certain um, um uh, work you know yeah. and, and maybe even innovating in a certain yeah. space and you have a plant yeah. you're providing you know a niche service but now you want to try and maybe multiply that yeah. that plant and it's like yeah. it takes maybe a few months exactly. to do that yeah. but if your if your technology can yeah. then very quickly do like yes. Instead of having three in a month yeah. or three in three months, you're having maybe 30 in three months. Rightly it's so. Yeah. Rightly so. And I think yeah, that this so. is a very important conversation because our events industry mm -hmm. use a lot of plants, mm -hmm. a lot of yeah. fresh flowers. Yeah. Now, the High Commissioner of Kenya tells me that we import mm -hmm. a lot of flowers from Kenya. Yep. We know that. And yep. of course, you're also importing yep. from outside the country. Yep. If I went COVID yep. came, Charlie, it was, yep. it was a yeah. problem, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. But if we have this yes. and some private players come exactly. into the mix, yes. then we can have a whole horticultural exactly. you know, sector just yeah. booming on its yeah. own. And hopefully, yeah. now yeah. there's after and all this, yeah. we mm. can be exporting within the, exactly. within the, exactly. the continent. So the fact is the reason why we need this partnership has as um, quickly as possible, uh, because um, look at what is happening globally now. Uh, it's even predicted that there will be a, a food crisis upcoming, mm -hmm. and so Ghana have to do things strategically. And so we have all institutions, both government and public, need to start partnering to see how we address food issues now moving forward. And I think Gaek has opened our doors to engage further. Mm. And so we are looking forward to speaking to the private sector, especially family communities mm. and businessmen who have money to invest. These are lucrative ventures that they can put their money and never regret. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Several other um, um, technologies, even still within the, the, um, the agri um, sector, we have what we call the, um, the Black Soldier Fly technology. Yeah, black so soldier fly. Yeah, black <laughs> soldier fly technology. <laughs> so this is where, so you know this is when you go to um, the markets and then you have this um, organic food waste. Yeah. So like rotten tomatoes, leftover cabbages and things. We don't need to dispose them off. Mm -hmm. Actually, we can convert these ones into food for pets, for animals, for poultry, oh, really? for fish. Mm -hmm. And then the byproduct, the residue, mm. is actually used to fertilize the soil. So it becomes an organic fertilizer okay. for the soil. So Fantastic. two products in one, mm -hmm. yes. yeah. or yes. maybe multiple products, yeah. depending on the different yeah. animals that you're feeding. And it actually helps us to also manage waste, you know, and it's a technology that we have. Currently, we are doing it, but unfortunately, we have it at a smaller level. We need partnership to expand capacity. Yeah. Mm. You see, we need uh, to expand capacity. Mm. We're also into compost as well, organic compost that we are doing. Currently, the I think market demands over 120 tons per quarter. Mm. We are able to just do about three tons because of mm. our size. Okay. So imagine that. <laughs> with, all, with all of this, I'm wondering, <laughs> you know, some of our um, larger waste management organizations, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, yep. um, I, 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 I don't see why we should be struggling. No, so yeah. I think that our problem is, and, and gentlemen, I mean, Nana and Stephen, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. 
it's just this our uh, thing of not knowing how to partner with each other. Everybody mm. wants to work in as an individual. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I make money, it's for me. Yeah. I don't have to share it with somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Everybody is a sole proprietorship, yeah. Yeah. you know, walking around the place. Every yeah. person is a business yeah. walking yeah. on the yeah. streets yeah. of Ghana. Yeah. But that also uh, makes us very ignorant of what exists, mm. you know. Mm. I'm hearing this and I'm thinking, why are we struggling? I tell you. Especially <laughs> with our Greek. Why are we struggling? Yeah. I don't think we should even have landfill mines anymore. No. Mm -hmm. the landfills should not exist. Especially now with the technology that we have. Yeah. Yeah. We you know, all why over do we the have world? landfills? Yeah. You know, because yeah. literally you can convert all of this yeah. in the shortest possible time yeah. to compost, to food yeah. for yeah. pets. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm like, yeah. wow. And we're dealing with the sustainable development goals. Yeah. Ghana is very supposed to be very big on that. Mm -hmm. This is one way of doing at least some aspects yeah. of yeah. it. Yeah. You want to say something? Yes, uh, yes uh, to add to what Nana mm. has indicated. Mm. Apart from all these technologies also, there are also some other technical services mm. that we render to, uh, to, uh, to enhance public health and safety. Okay. Okay. So for instance, uh, we have an industrial radiator where we use, to, uh, we, we use uh, some uh, quantity of ionizing radiation uh, we give to foods that we are going to export uh, if it's yam and other uh, food, uh, uh, fruits to increase the shelf life. So for the uh, fruits, for instance, it will delay the ripening process if ah, it's exported and I all this. And then yeah. also we have a, a, we monitor imported dairy products and, and, and meat and fish for possible contamination of uh, radioactivity. So all the milk and the cheese that I like, you monitor it, it, all that? Yes, yes. <laughs> what what yes. happened was that whenever <laughs> the importers import uh, these products, as part mm. of the processes for them to clear, they send samples to our laboratory at Gaek, okay. mm. where we, we, we monitor them, mm. we assess them for a possible contamination mm. of cesium 127. Mm. So that at the end of the day, your, your, your diary products that you like very much <laughs> will be safe. Uh, so By the way, where would cesium-137 get into these products? Potentially, no, what, what, what happened was that uh, what happened was that uh, in 1987 there was the Chernobyl nuclear yes. disaster yes. accident yes. in the former yeah. USSR, now, now yeah. Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. And after that, whenever these things happen, there is a fallout into the oh. environment mm. and dispersion. So the cattle, the okay. cows, so all exactly. of them okay. as they are grazing. Yeah, so it fits into the food chain. Okay. As far back uh, as 1987. Uh, yeah. And after that, there have suddenly been other incidents. Mm. Uh, you remember yeah. the incident in Japan in 2011, the mm. Fukushima Daiichi yes. nuclear power incident. Yeah. So governments and national bodies instituted these measures mm. that as these are uh, exported transboundary-wise, we should monitor them. Okay. Uh, because there is the possibility that they might have entered into, into the, the food, food chain. chain. Mm. So that's I why see. we have been doing this monitoring. I and see. then also, there are other services that we do, even uh, the issue of uh, radon. Radon is also... Very important. Radon yeah. is one of the gases which mm. emanates from the earth crust. Mm. So currently, we have the capability to uh, monitor for the radon mm. levels. So currently, we are having a pilot project in the, mine, in the, in the mines okay. for the occupational exposure of radon. It's a gas, and it has been estimated by the World Health Organization that it is the second most uh, leading cause of lung cancer after wow. non-smokers. After non-smokers. Non yes, after non-smokers. Is it, is it a natural... Um, yes. You know, gas that emanates yes, from, the the from the earth. Crust. I yeah. see. Yeah. Are so there certain times of the year or certain seasons where you find it? Yes. So, know, for instance, the current uh, studies, preliminary studies that we are doing, we are monitoring throughout the whole season. So, uh, from January to December, and then after that, we are, but the good thing is that if we know, we can prevent them. Uh, so, mm. for instance, in some advanced countries, for instance, in their building code, it is indicated in that that mm. before you build yeah they should okay. have an assessment oh. of the potential radon level in the area okay. so these are some of the things that going forward we can uh, okay. we can also as a country so you can't just adapt. build anywhere exactly. without checking exactly yeah, you, you have built a nice <laughs> house but you don't know radon is it's, it's it's land cancer. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. wow. And now that we are sealing all our windows. Mm. Yes, yes exactly. air, condi air conditioning. Yeah, air conditioning. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's risky. Yeah. Yeah, so inside the room with the radon. Yeah, <laughs> you live together. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, we are really grateful. Grateful for your time. Yeah. Uh, and if I may add this yes, one. Quickly. Last yes, thing go ahead. Go ahead. Other services that we also do is mm. the, we do uh, an assessment 
of the emission levels that come from the telecommunication max. Okay. When we started the education, I told you we were yes. Yes. Yeah, this one. The, 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 the phones, uh -huh. the phones we are having and the tablets, yeah. they communicate with an antenna. Okay. So we have our team of men, very dedicated and experienced mm -hmm. and qualified, who are in the field, mm -hmm. and we do assessments of the potential levels okay. of the of the of the of the of the radiation levels from okay. there as part of the processes for them to get their license from the environmental protection agency okay. for them to man the max okay so currently we monitor all the telecommunication mm. companies all the over the country yeah we monitor yes. all over the country and and one day we, 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 day we should have a conversation <laughs> about microwaves and yes we yeah, should yeah, we have to important. bring you back yeah, yeah, okay, let's yeah, talk yeah. about some, oh, some those, of these those other, other things, things. Yeah. yes 5G and other things. Yeah. 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 Sensitize. Very important. Yeah. Yeah. Very yes. important. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so very much. much. Thank you. I've enjoyed this conversation yeah. so yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Professor Inkum, thank you very much. Our You're pleasure. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and as Nana indicated, yeah. we are looking out for the partnership yeah. for yeah. us to expand the current yeah. capabilities or the services that we have. Oh, some of them will be as this is Ghana. The potential. Government of Ghana is doing its best. And our international partners are doing their best. We need the private sector so yeah, that yes. we can expand yeah. our, capa our current capabilities for the technical services that we render at Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. All right. Yeah. But in case somebody is just listening to us mm. and they want to inquire more, mm. um, the person could call us on the mobile number. Okay. Yeah, please give it. Yes, 020-200-3151. Um, okay. 020-200-3151. Okay. Yes, and then I'll personally pick it up. Okay. okay. With the person Fantastic. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you're welcome. Right. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a nice and day. And our pleasure. <laughs> All, right. <Yeah. laughs> Great. All right. So we'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. There's more that's coming up on Breakfast Daily.